What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Steve from Printing Gang Investments. I'm back with another video, man. And today, today was the day they tried to test us. Today was the trade they tried to get at us. I told y'all they was coming. You know, I said I know they coming. I, I've been thinking they was coming since like election night. But today was the first day where they tried to knock us red. So we're going to talk about it. I'm going to show y'all some of my positions. I uh, added some new positions. Some of my positions are down. Uh, some companies be earning. So let's get into it, man. So first and foremost, with the Palantir position, I think we closed like 59.93. We was actually down as much as like 3% today. Um, I think after hours this morning, we was down like 5%. So I really thought it was going to be judgment day out here. I was like, what's up? I was ready for whatever. I was finna buy some calls on the dip. But they didn't do it like that. I was waiting for a certified dip like 7%, 10%, something like that. But it has not come yet. So let's review the calls. So they finally applied pressure to my new calls. We finally got some red on the screen. If you've been watching this channel, they ain't been putting nothing but green on the screen for like eight days in a row. So yesterday I rolled off some risk and I pushed my date down on some calls, which if you know anything about call options, that's very risky. I bought uh, December and January calls and I'm down. 16 about 16 almost 17 percent on those those are going to be some riskier calls you know those can go to zero if they uh if we don't hit these prices i got by december and january or at least get close to them and i got them all the way up at 75 or 80 so that's a risk we're gonna see what happens with that as far as my other calls they took some of the gains back i'm only up seven percent on my two uh june June 2025 calls these $80 calls one of them's up but the other one I bought yesterday and it came down so that got me about flat on that January 26 calls only up 18 per 17 percent and the one I've been holding that $40 call we still up 588 percent I've been up as high as 650 percent we're gonna see how that pans out so that's the Palantir trade Palantir did pretty good today they held up so I'm I'm loving what's going on I'm seeing people on TV every day starting to notice the ontology. People are really starting to figure out what's up with Palantir. It's not just us. It's not just people like me. It's not just people like Ahmed, Arnie. It's not just that hardcore day one Palantir community. The regular analysts are starting to notice it. So that's going to help us in the future. But for today, we held up pretty good. Any dip, I will be probably hopping down if they give us a serious dip. You know what I'm saying? If these uh, calls here, these causes now right here they get spanked around the time those will begin spanked what might would probably be where i begin in so let's go look down a little bit i got my rocket lab call y'all and i'm excited about this one man i should have put some more money into this rocket lab because at the time of this recording rocket lab just beat earnings and now they up 18 percent oh my god 1741 so that call was already up 200 percent so that call is gonna do some numbers in the morning i'm gonna give y'all an update you know tomorrow evening the next palantir yolo update oh my god rocket labs up 20 percent yeah so rocket lab is going digital they reported a smaller loss than normal then they beats on um the revenue that came in but the revenue growth was 55 percent for a growth company so that's why that stock is doing that we'll get back to checking on that and as far as my other positions i've been going through it people that's why i was taking a lot of gains earlier because i knew that this time would come so if we go up i'm still struggling on ion q up here i don't even think i made gains on this one yet i was up 70 percent then I was down. Then I was up 20%. Then I think I was up 50%. And as of right now, I'm still down 15%. This GEO call, I tried to go in for round two of the games, but they applying that pressure. I'm not mad at it. I made 150% on the first call I had. So I took that money and tried to buy another call, but it's looking like they're applying pressure. We're going to see what happens tomorrow. We might be rolling that, adding to it, getting out of it. I'm going to let y'all know. In advanced auto parts, that's still in the cut. Like That's, like, that's a play that... It's not my main play because it's a turnaround story. And I like to mess with the companies that are growing. I like to mess with the companies that are executing, outperforming. So a turnaround story is a lot riskier because the company's already messing up. So management has to improve what they're doing. But it could be crazy profits if they do improve. So that's why I got this here. So it doesn't expire until January. And I'm just watching that. I'm watching that. I'm waiting to see what comes out of management. I'm waiting to see if they can turn around before I potentially add to it. Because there might be some real money. So that's where we're at as far as the options. So let's go look at some of these stocks, y'all. So the market has been getting interesting. I don't really uh, show it on here because I don't have the internet connection to live stream like that. 
but I do day trade uh, in the morning a lot of days and I noticed something yesterday that was very strange to me uh, all the stocks were pumping the Teslas and the Palantirs and the Sofis and the Rocket Lab all the stocks are pumping but the market actually sold off Nvidia was down uh, Apple was down Magnificent 7 was flat and that made me realize that this is what Tom Lee been talking about for months with that small cap rally. The small cap stocks are starting to outperform the large cap stocks. Now, I wouldn't tell anybody to like go overweight small cap stocks for the next 5, 10, 15 years. But for this next period, this next 3 months, 6 months, 12 months, 18 month period, they might be outperforming some of our larger, more beloved stocks like an Apple. Like They might be outperforming some of those stocks in the short term. So if you're a trader, swing trader like I am, you might might want to try and get some of them gains but let's look at what we had today we had nvidia up two percent so they finally recovered they finally recovered appreciate you my dog you already know yeah i had nvidia up they finally recovered microsoft was up 1.2 percent today amazon was up one percent let's see and our the small caps that we're looking at were down i had my oaklo down today ion q had a down day today sofi had a down day palantir had a down day Oh, look at that super micro, y'all. They lucky I ain't had the money to short that because we said that in the video. The whole super micro is capped. That shit is crazy, man. That shit is crazy, y'all. But looking at these stocks right now, we got metal was flat today. I want to see what's going on with the small cap rally because today, if you look at MNQ, that's the future symbol for uh, the NASDAQ, the QQQ, and the SPY. They were actually slightly down today. So I don't know where they're going to go with this trend. Let's look at this. So we broke out. We've broken out. And they're pulling back into a fair value gap. They tried to bounce off of it on the daily time frame. For the QQQ. So how do I look at that? It's still a top. It's still a top. Um, I don't advise people to short a top for no reason. We don't have any macro data. You know, maybe if the CPI report comes out bad tomorrow, we get like some bad jobs numbers or something. We could short the market, but I don't really want to short the market just because it's high right now. But I am watching this area up here to see how we can perform. I'm watching this area here to see how we can perform. Um, so far, we are bouncing. If we can pull back. We might get some entries, you know, on a longer term time frame, maybe for some swing trades, for some calls. I will also go look at Palantir real quick. You know, that's my biggest position. So we got to look at Palantir's chart. Palantir's chart after that doji yesterday, we had a down candle today, which actually makes sense if you look out because they were indecisive yesterday and we actually went red today we didn't go that red today and we're still testing our fair value gap so I'm looking at like this 57 27 middle of this fair value gap for support 56 all the way up to like 58 43 I'm not gonna be buying there because I got a good position but I do want to see can we hold that area is that fair value gap gonna get respected or not and for us to fall the best areas at this point would probably be like the 52 area and this whole 51 through 43 like it's crazy I'm saying this because as a person who's been doing technical analysis on Palantir for a minute this is the first time we didn't have any don't have a lot of levels like that because of how we've been running and the levels we do have the numbers that I'm telling you guys to buy at it's like I'm looking I'm like for real but yeah that's what it is they're telling us that we got to load up in the mid to high 40s and 45 it looks like that that zone if we hit 45 that might be like us hitting 20 back in the day. But uh, we'll see what's up with that. You know, that's just some of my quick thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as far as market sentiment right now, I really want to watch how this thing going to play out. Because that Trump rally is getting a little overextended. But at the same time, we don't necessarily want to, like, doubt it. Because it's like I tell people, this is what we invest in stocks for. Like, I've been buying Palantir what for the past two three years i've been buying it since 2022 i've been buying nvidia since 150 i've been buying a lot of these stocks i wish i had bought a lot of sofi um a lot of rocket lab we buy these stocks because we think we're right about it and then once it finds out we're right about the thing we said people get scared and sell out i see it all the time people are due to dd is you know how many people bought pounds here at six seven eight bucks because they did the research and then they hit twelve dollars and they thought it was too overvalued based on their dcf models or based on their valuations that they did and then they went on and sold it and missed out on the run so i was listening to one analyst they 
they were saying the best thing to do right how right now is just stay put like i've been taking a lot of gains on pro on call options just in case something goes wrong but for the biggest majority of my position i'm just gonna really stay put and see how this thing pans out because it is november going into december these are historically two of the best months of the year um on top of that you got the trump rally on top of that as you can see on my cnbc bitcoin has hit ninety thousand dollars so that's gonna make all the crypto miner stocks like the coinbases the micro strategies i know they're going through the roof i should have bought that too it's with palantir i would have made even more money but with that being said crypto's pumping which will probably lead to the qqq company which will probably lead to have these stocks we buy pumping plus it's november december santa claus rally if we get cool cpi tomorrow that's another bullish catalyst they just did a rate cut so it's like i don't really see the catalyst to knock us down right now i'm waiting for them and i'm being cautious i'm taking gains just in case but i don't really see the catalyst right now so that's why i'm staying put um if you're not in the market yet be very careful about hopping in like do not hop in with all your money at these levels because they're the highs and unless you're prepared to buy more when it goes down or hold through whatever comes with buying at the top i wouldn't necessarily advise you to do that right now but you know just sit on your hands just watch this thing pan out we're in a new administration there's going to be a lot of rule changes it's going to be stocks that benefit stocks that don't benefit and we're going to be here to see all of it but anyway it's your boy steve from printing gang investments i'm gonna be out i'm gonna be see y'all in the next video